السلام علیکم میرا نام ہے ایلن کیسلر میں امریکہ میں بیٹھ کر ہمیشہ پاکستان کے بارے میں سوچتا رہتا ہوں پیس بی وتھ یو مائی نیم از ایلن کیسلر آل دو آئی لیو ان امیرکا آئی ایم آلویز تھنکنگ اباؤٹ پاکستان وائی بیکاز آئی ایم کنوینسڈ پاکستان از دا پلیس ویئر آل آف آر ڈیزائرز ول بی فلفلڈ فار ورلڈ پیس اینڈ پراسپیرٹی فرام پاکستان ونس دیٹ peace and unity that truth and justice and love especially is established from there it will spread all over the world God willing so that's why <laughs> I'm always thinking about Pakistan so we will do a little recitation of the names of God and then we will read from four scriptures the Holy Quran Holy Bible Bhagavad Gita and Dhammapada We will recite the names of God from different traditions. Allah, 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 Adonai, 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 Adonai. Ram, 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 صاحب سے نہیں پڑھ رہے ہیں اس لیے میں تھوڑا اور گرو نانک جی کی وانی بول رہا ہوں اچھا ہم قرآن شریف سے پڑھ رہے ہیں سورہ نمبر بائیس اب تک الحج اور Wow, so this is a parable. Urdu Tarjama, I'm just going to translate in Urdu. Ya insan, ye ek parable, ek kahani ap kaya sakte hai. Mujhe yaad nahi hai Urdu ka lafz, Urdu lafz kya parable ke liye. Ek misal shayad. Suno, is baat ko suno. وہ جن کو تم بلاتے ہیں جن کا نام تم لیتے ہو اللہ کے علاوہ وہ ایک مکھی بھی نہیں بنا سکتے ہیں اگر وہ سب اکٹھے ہو کر کوشش کرتے وہ کچھ نہیں کر سکتے ایک مکھی بھی نہیں بنا سکتے اور اگر وہ مکھی ان سے کچھ بھی چیز لیں ان کی کوئی طاقت نہیں ہے کہ وہ اس مکی سے وہ چیز لے سکے 
ये दोनों बहुत फीबल है कमजोर हैं दोनों जो ऐसे ऐसे चीजों से दुआ करते हैं और वो चीजें जिन वो जो दुआ करते हैं दुआ करने वाला है और वो जिन को वो दुआ करते हैं वो दोनों <laughs> कमजोर है कि एक मक्की से भी वो एक चीज वापस नहीं ले सकते अगर वो मक्की उससे कुछ लेते हैं सो दिस इज अ वेरी पावरफुल पैराबल टू थिंक अबाउट ए फ्लाई अ लिटल फ्लाई अ लिटल मस्कीटो अ लिटल बग सो पीपल वर्शिप सो मेनी थिंग्स दे वर्शिप मॉडर्न टेक्नोलॉजी एंड साइंस and they think they can create they do create little <laughs> spy devices little insects tiny little spy devices It may look like a fly <laughs> but that fly can't actually do anything on its own it's controlled by the scientists so those scientists we shouldn't worship them we shouldn't be afraid of their technology because they are also servants of allah but they can't really can create a living fly even if all of them got together <laughs> and then if they if a fly would take anything from them they couldn't do anything actually this is a parable explaining that without the power that allah grants us we can't do anything we can't even raise our hand we can't even breathe all that power is given by god so if we turn to anything other than god to politicians to scientists <laughs> to wealthy people we worship them because we think they have money we can get something from them so we turn our attention to them we praise them we glorify them all falsely of course uh that's useless they can't actually do anything to help us so the holy quran is here reminding us that we should worship only allah only god only the supreme creator and source of everything that's only one allah okay we'll read from the holy bible let's see where are we now psalms we're reading from the psalms of king david i believe we have come now to the last portion of this 22nd psalm yea to him shall all the proud of the earth bow down before him shall bow all who go down to the dust and he who cannot keep himself alive posterity shall serve him men shall tell of the lord to his coming generation and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn that he has wrought it to usko matlab allah subhanahu wa taala ko puri duniya ke sab jo bade log bhi hain apne aap ko bade samajhne wale kumar wale वो भी उसके सामने झुकेंगे वो भी अल्लाह के सामने सजद करेंगे सब जो मिट्टी में नीचे जाते हैं वो सब अल्लाह के सामने झुकेंगे और वो जो अपने आप को जिंदा नहीं करा सकता है ये अपने आप को जिंदा बरकरार नहीं रख सकते है वो सब अल्लाह के सामने सजदा करेंगे हमेशा तक सब हमारे बच्चे बच्चों के बच्चे सब अल्लाह की खिदमत करेंगे और जो आने वाले पीढ़ियां हैं उनको अल्लाह के बारे में इंसान सिखाएंगे बच्चों को बताएंगे कि अल्लाह तुम्हारी हिफाजत करने वाला है अल्लाह तुम्हारी निजात दिलाने वाले है और वो ही करने वाला है हाँ तो यहाँ भी हम अल्लाह के बारे में सुन रहे हैं जो करने वाला है एक मक्की को 
और कोई नहीं बना सकते हैं अल्लाह बना सकते हैं जिंदगी अल्लाह दे सकते हैं निजात अल्लाह दिलवा सकते हैं सो हियर अगेन वी आर सीइंग द प्रेज ऑफ द वन गॉड अल्लाह व्हाट एवर नेम वी गिव हिम अल्लाह वी मे कॉल हिम तोयनी वी मे कॉल हिम आदोनाय वी मे कॉल हिम राम वी मे कॉल हिम बुद्धा वी मे कॉल हिम डाओ we may call him ikomkar we're all talking about the same supreme absolute source of everything the creator and the protector and the savior of all allah allah akbar so everyone from now until eternity ho si bhi sach hai bhi sach ho si bhi sach aad sach jugad sach Habi sach nana kaho si bhi sach. The one truth, hak tala, the one supreme, absolute truth, God, the source of everything. He is the one who all generations are taught about by good instructors. Parents will teach their children forever about the one supreme truth. Nana ka, Guru Nanak is explaining also. that this will always be the way it is forever posterity shall serve him and men and women shall tell of the lord to the coming generation we should help our children understand that there is one supreme absolute lord of everyone and everything and our goal our only purpose should be to achieve allah to serve allah to develop love of allah allah akbar reading from bhagavad gita just i will randomly open <laughs> this oh my goodness this is a verse we've done before too <laughs> i don't know why i always keep doing this but Anyway, it's happened again, so I'll go ahead and read the verse. In charge of the various necessities of life, the demigods, being satisfied by the performance of yajna (sacrifice), will supply all necessities to you. But he who enjoys such gifts without offering them to the demigods in return is certainly a thief. Hmm. So, is dunya ke jo zaruri cheeze hain, unke हाथ में वो तो फरिश्तों के हाथ में है और जब हम कुर्बानी करते हैं तो ये फरिश्ते देखकर हमें सब कुछ देते हैं जो हमें चाहिए लेकिन वो जो इन इनाम लेता है कुर्बानी का फल जो लेता है और वापस नहीं देता है मतलब फरिश्तों को जो अल्लाह सुबहान ताला के वजीर हैं आप कह सकते हैं उनके नुमाइंदे हैं उनको अगर हम वापस नहीं देते हैं तो हम सिर्फ चोर बन जाते हैं सो इफ वी डोंट अंडरस्टैंड दिस इन द कॉन्टेक्स्ट वी विल मिस अंडरस्टैंड समटाइम्स दिस ट्रांसलेशंस आर मिसलीडिंग बिकॉज ऑफ द वर्ड्स द वर्ड इंग्लिश गॉड द इंग्लिश वर्ड गॉड इज यूज्ड आल्सो विद अ स्मॉल जी बिग जी फॉर अल्लाह विद अ स्मॉल जी फॉर द रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स ऑफ गॉड एंजल्स आई कॉल देम एंजल्स here the translation is demigods they are representatives of god agents of god so they are working for god but they are not god they are not really <laughs> god they are simply servants of god all of us are servants of god but the point that's being made here is that if we receive gifts from the agents of god from the angels of god from the representatives of god it's our duty to repay or to return give her our return just like if we get electricity from the electric company which is the agent of the government but we don't pay our electric bills <laughs> electricity will get cut off <laughs> we'll be considered a thief we have to pay also our share we get the electricity we have to pay the bill 
So in the same way, we get so many benefits we're getting all the time. We're getting the sunlight, the sunshine. We're getting water. We're getting air to breathe, although now in California the air is smoky, not good quality air because of all the fires going on, but still we're getting air we can breathe. So we're getting all these things. We don't have to pay our water bill, our light bill, our air bill. We have to. Otherwise we're thieves. We cannot take everything, just think, oh, this is mine, I can get it. No, we should be thankful and we have to reciprocate. We have to offer back what is ours, what is our strength that we are given. Our strength also, our bodily strength comes from the food we're given. So we can't just take it all and use it for ourselves. We have to engage in the service of the Lord. And the best way is by Allah, 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 by chanting the names of God. So it's our duty. Otherwise we become thieves if we don't thank God and reciprocate with God and praise God in exchange for all the things we are given. All right. And from the Dhammapada we're reading, chapter 10, text 14. Though gaily decked, if he should live in peace, with passions subdued and senses controlled, certain of the four paths of sainthood, perfectly pure, laying aside the rod in his relations towards all living beings. A brahmana indeed is he, an ascetic is he, a bhikkhu is he. Hmm. So here we are being instructed. Achha, iska Urdu tarjama. Hmm. Mere kya mein iska matlab hai? Bhot achhe kapre pehante hue bhi ya sirf kapre nahi balki sab jo is duniya ki achhi cheeze hain agar wo sab unke paas hai phir bhi agar wo aman mein rehta hai aur apne khwahishat ko kabu mein apne nafs ko kabu mein lata hai aur char raaste par chalte hain जो बली अवली अल्लाह के चार रास्ते पर चलते हैं और अगर वो मुकम्मल तौर पर पाक भी रहते हैं और सब हस्तियों के तालुक में वो डंडा को छोड़ देता है वो ही है एक सच्चा ब्राह्मण एक सच्चा फकीर एक बिकू ये बिकू लफ्स है बुद्ध मजहब में वो जो अपनी पूरी जिंदगी धर्म के लिए देते हैं धमा के लिए देते हैं दीन के लिए कुर्बान करते हैं सब कुछ हाँ सो द एक्सटर्नल अपीयरेंस डजेंट मैटर मैन लुक ऑन द आउटवर्ड अपीयरेंस बट गॉड लुक ऑन द हार्ट so even if he's gaily decked even if he has wonderful clothing and a big position in society and is very wealthy that doesn't matter <laughs> no benefit in it or no benefit in not having it really but either way even if one does have all those external symptoms of greatness and wealth and happiness still he can be a true ascetic he can be a true brahman or bhikkhu if he lives peacefully subdues his passions controls his senses i'm not sure quite what this means certain of the four four paths of sainthood i'm not familiar with those four paths but they must be there in the buddha's teachings perfectly pure well, that's we understand that pak <laughs> that's all we're talking about <laughs> i'm always talking about pakistan the land of the pure so one must be perfectly pure. He must be pak if we want to succeed in spiritual life. Laying aside the rod in his relations towards all beings. Don't think, 
I can punish you, I'm strong, I'm powerful, I can condemn you. No, very humble. These are the required qualities. Hmm. All right, so we are going to speak in English today mostly because some people have asked me, and I know I have people who come on my chats who don't know Urdu, and most of my Pakistani Facebook friends do speak some English, so I'm going to mostly talk in English today for a change. Let's see what questions we have. Um, we have a lot of highs and salams from Ali Hassan Noor and Ali Raza. And salam Baba Ji. I'm a little bit better from my flu that I had or head colds. Malak um, Khalil, oh, we're all getting little signs. Tipu Qureshi, love you, sir. Thank you very much. Love, this is the goal. Love of each other in service to God and love of God is the ultimate goal of life. The highest perfection of life is love of God and love of all of God's creation. That's what I understand. <laughs> and Munira Qureshi says, Assalamu alaikum. Allah aapko aur aapki bibi ko sehat ata farmai. Ameen. Thank you very, very much. She is greeting me with the greetings of peace and praying that God will give good health to me and my wife. Actually, I will take this opportunity to mention that uh, I was just discussing with my good wife. She is uh, in a lot of pain these days, but, and we are going to try to, it, it will take some money to have some more medical treatments. So she agreed that I can put up a request on Facebook for funds for her medical because things are so expensive in America. It costs thousands of dollars to do anything <laughs> medically significant. So we are going to request donations for her medical treatment. So thank you for your prayers also. I will be announcing that on my Facebook page. Facebook has a system now where you can ask for med donations for medical needs. They know so many people in America are not able to afford their medical needs. So we're going to do that, inshallah. So Ahmed Hashmi Al Abasi says, Gunagar in San Kobahot, Jald Alaki Madat ki Zurut ho to work kya kare. Ha, wo ho bhot gunagar. So he's saying that a sinful human being requires the help of God very quickly. So he should work. Yes, he is very sinful. I don't completely understand what you are referring to here. But this is the statement. And it's true. Sinful humanity has uh, the necessity of, God, of our God's help. So he's saying, so I guess then if he needs God's help, he should work. So that's what sometimes, and there's an English saying also like that. God helps those who help themselves. So if you want God's help, you should work. <laughs> Otherwise, he's very sinful. I think that's the implication here. Yes, we must be active. We should not be lazy. We've heard that before from the Dhammapada. Lazy people are condemned. Uh, but we should be very active. At least we should be very active in our spiritual endeavors, praying, meditating, serving others. We should not be lazy. I think that's what he's trying to drive at here. That uh, we shouldn't just be lazy. We should work. Yes, good point. Okay, more questions. How are you? 
Oh, yes. I got a little cut. Fazal Rahim, what is Holocaust? Oh. <laughs> so, of course, the Holocaust has different meanings. It just means a big, terrible, horrible happening, usually where many, many people are killed. So one meaning of the word Holocaust is the Armageddon, the, con the final battle that all over the world people are expecting before world peace will be established, which every tradition, practically every tradition, says there will be a time when world peace will be established. But before that, there will be a Holocaust, a big war in which most of the people on the world may be killed and so much suffering, horrible, but then after that there can be peace. Another meaning of Holocaust it specifically is used to refer to the killing of many Jews during the Second World War by Nazi Germany specifically. Of course Nazi Germany killed many non-Jews also, but um, so I'm not sure which you're referring to, but we're taking the first meaning of the Armageddon, the final horrible battle where so many people are supposed to die. Uh, this may be a little surprising if you haven't heard me say this before, but I believe that that final Holocaust has been cancelled. <laughs> it is not necessary for world peace to be established for there to be a big war. The Third World War was destined to happen in the end of the 20th century. Maybe extending into the beginning, but now it's over. Almost over anyway. That destined time for that final holocaust, that final Armageddon, that final world war, that is now finished. That is not going to happen. That worldwide, international, atomic or nuclear holocaust that everyone was fearing and expecting, it's not going to happen, inshallah. God willing, that has been prevented. This was told to me in 1998 that that war, which may have started as early as 1980 or 1984, the final Holocaust, and would have been finalized by 1999 or so, uh, it was prevented. Not that we could have prevented it, no, but God, Allah himself, made that decision. That even though he had foretold it in all the Bible and the Hadith and in all the holy scriptures of different traditions, that there would be such a final war, he changed that destiny of humanity. So he has that power. God is fully independent. He can do whatever he wants. So he decided to change that scenario of the Holocaust. <laughs> Acha, praise God, from whom all blessings flow, even the blessing of being freed from the total destruction. Two-thirds of the world population, people calculated, or more would be killed if there were a nuclear war, a worldwide war. But that's not going to happen. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. Fazal Rahim is asking, Acha, Holocaust is saying the same thing. So I already answered that question. Ali Raza, sir, please explain about the Day of Judgment. What is your review and what will be big question on that day as your thoughts? It's about Allah or humanity. So, Ali Raza Sahib is also asking about the Holocaust, the Day of Judgment. Very good question. So, what is the, is it about Allah or humanity? The Day of Judgment is about the interaction on, of Allah and humanity. Uh, this Day of Judgment, this people don't know much about this. Day of Judgment happens repeatedly throughout the universe. There are Days of Judgment. And Days of Judgment are when a planet, an entire planet's population, is given the opportunity to ascend to a higher level of consciousness. Specifically, it refers to when a human population like the human population of our planet, comes to the point where we can leave aside the animal-like mentality, the mentality of fighting and lying and cheating and stealing, killing each other. And we can come to the proper human level of love of each other, love of humanity. And of course, that's not possible without love of God. 
So the final judgment day happens again and again and again throughout the universe. And it is said that it happens once on this planet, once every 75,000 or 76,000 years. Or at least this day of judgment has come about after a long period of development of about 75 or 76,000 years. So it has been predicted for a long time. And now it is happening. And usually when a human race has to evolve to a higher level, if they're not fortunate, they have to undergo a horrible day of suffering. Not a 24-hour period, but a time which may be decades or centuries even. A period of horrible suffering in order to chasten us, to purify us, to be ready for the ascension, the higher life that exists after the Day of Judgment. The fourth density, as we say, the, the new age of love and peace. So that is coming. Very, very soon it's coming now. But that war, as I mentioned, uh, Holocaust, that nuclear Holocaust, that has been prevented. But we can still achieve peace. But what is necessi what is a necessity? <laughs> and it will happen in Pakistan, inshallah. We must love each other. That's the basis of higher peaceful living, is love. So we must give up our selfish attitude, and we must love each other. And we must love God. We must serve God and serve each other. If we learn to do that, we become united, and we give up lying and cheating and stealing, and we establish a rule of justice, a khilafat, a government which is based on the law of God, which is love, then we won't need to have that big international atomic war, but we can establish peace and unity and love and truth and justice. So that will happen in Pakistan, inshallah. That's what I've been told. <laughs> I may be wrong, but that's what I've been told, and I believe it. So this is the wider understanding about the Day of Judgment. Many people have so many ideas about the Day of Judgment, but this is my idea. This is my understanding. All right. Amjad Ali, how to do meditation, sir? <laughs> there are many different ways to meditate. One is just to breathe deeply and to think about, focus your attention on the breath itself. That's one way of meditation. Very popular around the world even now. Buddhist just tradition emphasizes that type of meditation. As for myself, I always recommend chanting the names of God or the names of the great servants of God also. So just like Allah, 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 Allah. That is the best form of meditation in my experience and my understanding. So just take a deep breath if you want to. Just simply breathing deeply calms the mind also. When the mind is calm, then it's easier to focus on the names of God. So that is what I always recommend. Amjad Ali is asking how to live with toxic people. <laughs> Good to avoid their company if we can. But if we have to live with them, then chant the names of God. <laughs> That will help protect us from the toxic people. So if we can be always chanting, always meditating on remembering God, then the toxic people, we will realize, oh, Allah has put us in their proximity. We are around them for some reason, so let us accept that as the situation we're in, if we can't avoid it. It's good to try to avoid being around toxic people, but if we can't, then we take it as God's mercy. <laughs> that there's an opportunity for us to learn something from these toxic people. And learn not to be toxic ourselves to others, to treat others very kindly. So there's so many things we can learn from being around toxic people. But good to try to avoid them. But if we can't, we should always be meditating, always be chanting the names of God especially. And that will help us avoid their toxicity, help us avoid being affected by them. And if we gain strength and power from the chanting names of God, then we can 
help purify them of their toxicity too. That's possible, but only if we're strong. Otherwise, we get affected by them. So it's a difficult situation, but we have to take it uh, as an opportunity for us to become stronger by meditation and chanting. So we have a question from Tehmina Malek. She always has very good questions. <laughs> if there is a person who has lost her or his self-esteem, only purpose of him or her is to tease people through every mean, what should people do who are living with him or her? Oh, it's similar to the last question, because that person is very toxic, who is always trying to tease people. Well, first we should understand that when somebody is trying to tease people, it's because of their own insecurity. So we should try to be merciful to them. Again, if possible, and we want to, and we can, we should avoid them. But if we can't, or if we want to be merciful to them, and we are strong enough to do that, then we can try. By prayer, by meditation, we can try to help them. Because you're right, uh, that person has lost self-esteem who teases other people. That's really the cause of it, teasing other people because of being insecure oneself. So what should we do? Well, we should pray. That's the first thing we can always do. We can pray for them. And just be kind to them. We should have this faith. If we're strong enough, we should have the faith that God is all-powerful and God can change them. So if we are kind to them, we just tolerate their meanness and their teasing, then they may be able to be changed. It can happen. We should try. But if we can't succeed, if we are getting too much affected by their meanness and teasing, then we should try to leave the situation. But we should be merciful if we are strong enough to try to be kind. That's the basic, to love them. We should love them even if they're mean to us. And then that can change their hearts. There are many stories and many true stories of how people who have been very mean, but they have been changed just by kindness, by love, and especially by <laughs> chanting of the name of God. Somehow or the other, we can get them to hear the name of God and even to recite the name of God themselves. Then that can change their hearts. Raza Awais, Baba Jan, lo khidmat karne ko... Bura kyun samjhte hain? Khidmat karne se hum Allah ke dost ban sakte hain. Khidmat Allah ke kareeb hone ka shortcut hai. Haan, bhoot achche baat. Haan, khidmat sab se zururi chiz hai. Hum khidmat gaar hain. Hum Allah ke khidmat gaar hain. Hum Allah ke khadim hain. To khidmat karna hi humare asli faris hai. تو لوگ کیوں خدمت کرنے کو برا سمجھتے ہیں مجھے معلوم نہیں وہ باغل ہیں ان کو غلط لوگوں نے کسی سکھایا شیطان نے سکھایا خدمت پت کرو خود مالک بنو تو آج اس دنیا میں شیطان بہت کامیاب ہو چکے ہیں اس نے بہت لوگوں کو سکھایا کہ کوئی خدا نہیں ہے تم خود مالک بنو دوسروں کی خدمت مت کرو دوسروں کو تمہاری خدمت میں لگاؤ جھگڑا کرو شیطان کا کام ہے تو حقیقت میں خدمت کرنے سے ہم اللہ کے دوست بن سکتے ہیں اللہ بہت خوش ہوتا ہے جب ہم خدمت کرتے ہیں دوسروں کی خدمت یا اللہ کی خدمت خدمت ہی اللہ کے قریب ہونے کا شارٹ کٹ ہے بہت اچھی بات ہے سو وی وی آر سروینٹس دیٹ از آر نیچر اٹ از اے سیٹینک پروگرام to try to convince people, don't serve others, become the master yourself. <laughs> we cannot be the master. We are servants by nature. Because we are weak. I am weak, but thou art strong. That is my daily prayer. Remember, we are weak. God is powerful. We are not strong. In one second, we can get a disease and we can die. How strong are we? So if we remember that we are weak and dependent on God, then we become strong. Then we become near to God by serving, by recognizing our weakness, and by depending on God's strength, we become strong and we can serve others, and we can serve God. We can serve all of creation. 
that is our real success in life, to become near to God by service. The path of service is the path, yes. Very nice point, Raza Awais Sahib. Thank you very much. So, uh, I am going to end this conversation now because I have to go. <laughs> and I am going to be teaching now. So, I'm beginning my job tomorrow. So, I won't be having this chat for the next couple of days. But, uh, I'm having a wonderful time preparing for this teaching job because it's going to be a new type of teaching. <laughs> First of all, I'm going to discuss with the students tomorrow about how we're going to do the grading in this class, not by usual exams, but I'm going to, I'm going to suggest to the students that half of the grade, because I'm teaching world religions, so only half of the grade will be academic, the other half will be spiritual. <laughs> If the students agree to this, we'll do it. I'm not going to do it without their permission. But So half of the grade will be spiritual practices, <laughs> prayer and meditation, and seeing how kind and loving the students become to each other, and to me, I guess. <laughs> so this is a very interesting proposal. I've never done this before in an educational institution, but this is a special school I'm teaching in. It's a Buddhist school. So this is my proposal. The name of the school is Developing Virtue school. <laughs> so we're going to be developing virtue as and part of the grade will be based on developing virtue. This is my proposal. So I'm very, very excited about this idea. And if the students agree, this is how I'm going to grade them in this course. <laughs> so that's why I'm not going to be uh, continuing this chat now. And I have to go and get ready for that. And I'm not going to be doing this chat for the next two days because I will be busy teaching. But thank you all very, very much for kindly listening. Shukriya. And let us all be happy <laughs> that world peace is coming. Truth and justice are being established now in the world. And we don't have to worry about that horrible holocaust, <laughs> that Armageddon that we thought would come first. No, inshallah. It will never come, God willing. It has been prevented, avoided. All right, so let us all keep praying, serving humbly, and being happy. That is the way to be happy, is by serving others and by serving God. Thank you all very, very much. May God protect us all. Allah is. Allah, Allah.